Hi, hey, today I'm going to go over using some basic shapes in Adobe InDesign, whether you're creating an annual report, print publication like a magazine, or an online magazine. Uh, these hopefully will be some useful tips on using some basic shapes and then also editing them, adding some rounded corners, some opacity effects, blending effects, because uh, a lot of publications do use shapes in their overall layout in addition to of course uh, body copy and photos. Now first thing you'll do find some kind of photo. I just have a photo here um, for my stock photo the free one of the week and just with the two page spread here so if you want to go ahead and go to file new create a three page document go to page two and three for spread here if you want to follow along something similar. Now for those of you unfamiliar with how to create a background here in Photoshop you know you could do the paint bucket tool to the background layer or you could press alt backspace on the PC or option delete on the Mac and that would be a shortcut to fill the background with the foreground color. Now in InDesign we don't really use the paint bucket we just create a shape in the background so that's one use for these basic shapes. So go ahead and click to the rectangle and click around the edges. You can go over the edge as you can see here and right away it has a black line, black stroke, and then no fill. You can see it right here, black stroke, no fill. I'm going to click that double sided arrow at the bottom of the toolbar. That's going to flip them and then I'm going to double click that black and choose some kind of background layer there, or background color. Okay, you notice it's on top of the photo though because we placed the photo first and in design whenever you place a photo or some text or create a new shape whatever's most recent can be on top so what you can do is go to object arrange send it back notice the shortcut shift control left bracket you can also if you had a bunch of objects on the page you could just make it go forward one level uh, doing control right bracket on the Mac it'd be a command or go back one with the left bracket alright so I'm gonna go send it back all right, so we have a nice background here, and you can notice I have it on preview. If I go to normal mode on the bottom, see how this uh, shape here goes over the edge? That's not going to print out on the PDF once we print because it's outside of that page border, right? So if I click and hold on the bottom of the toolbar palette and go to preview, it will actually preview what it'll look like. All right, so this we won't see because it's just going to have in the PDF whatever's inside that page there. All right. Now, if you are wanting to create a layout, let me go ahead and control shift on the Mac would be command shift and just click and drag the corner there. And I'm going to make that just so it goes uh, maybe a little bit over one page there. All right, let's have a little bit more room to work with over here. And some things to consider with shapes. All right, so we have a shape here. Let's say we wanted to make the title over here and bring it in a little bit. What you can do is click and drag like so. And um, I'm going to flip that again. And then for this black, um, you can actually click this eyedropper tool and it'll sample that. All right, so it looks like it's the same shape there. All right, so you could have this um, here. Let's say if we just wanted it to go all the way across, something like so. And then we could bring some text in, uh, you know, feature story title. And maybe we'll make it white color and 60 points, something like that. Okay. So we'd have some kind of layout here with the, the byline by so-and-so, and the article would start here. All right, so you had some consistency with the color scheme using some basic shapes. Uh, some things to consider, though, if you wanted to do this. Uh, let's say we don't want this to be as strong. I think it looks fine now, but let's just say, uh, for argument's sake, we want to make it a little bit transparent. What you can do is go to Window and then Effects, bring that opacity down. 
so you could bring it down say 50% or whatever. You can also adjust the layer blending, or not really layer, the object blending mode, how it blends with what's behind it, kind of like in Photoshop when you have the layer blending mode. You have a couple of these similar effects. You could do multiply, uh, color dodge, darken, hue, whatever. All right, so I'm just going to do normal though and have 50% opacity. All right. Uh, now, another thing to consider, let's say you don't like that hard edge. You want it to be a rounded rectangle. Where if you go over to the rectangle, there's no rounded rectangle tool there. What you have to do with it selected is go to Object and then Corner Options. All right. Notice this chain link is selected. What that means is if I make the change to one, it's going to change all of them, all four sides. So set it to rounded, then maybe bring this and make sure preview selected. And you can preview it here. I'll bring it up to two, P there, and hit OK. And then we have a nice rounded rectangle as well. Let me bring the opacity up so you can see it a little bit better. All right. So there we go. Uh, one more thing to consider with using shapes like this. Let's say you had a layout and you wanted to uh, create a couple shapes and combine them though without grouping them because around the group you would want the border itself and I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we have a lips tool over here and you're going to create maybe some clouds. Um, so I'll just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. So I'm just holding shift for some perfect circles, but we're just creating kind of a, a cloud shape here. All right. What you can do is hold shift and select all these, or you can click and drag around them. And um, if you hold down shift and click this to deselect it. So you just have all these selected here, or you could draw it off uh, the pages over here and drag it over. But anyway, all of these are selected, right? Go ahead and go to Window and then Object and Layout, and then Pathfinder. It's similar to the Pathfinder palette in Illustrator. Not as many options, but um, a couple of them here. The Convert Shape is just if you wanted to convert whatever selected to that specific shape. Uh, but if you want to use Pathfinder, all these do different things. They may exclude areas that overlap or include areas that overlap. But for this one, I'm just going to click the first one to add to. What it does is I click it, and then it combines them all. So now, instead of having borders around every single circle there. I'll show you what it does. So I'll just make a black border there and make it say 8 point so you can see it. And then you have the border instead of going around every single circle which what would happen if you just grouped it, you know, object group. Um, the Pathfinder combines them all so now it's just one shape. Alright, so you can move that around. Alright, so you'd use a grid and maybe some columns and enter in some text here for your feature story. Maybe put a quote inside the cloud. I don't know. But those are some couple uh, things to consider when you're creating some basic shapes, rounded edges, corner effects, using the Pathfinder to combine some of the uh, shapes there, as well as uh, using the eyedropper tool to pull out uh, basically attributes of another shape. So if I had this selected real quick, if I click this over here you notice it creates it so it's that specific color for the fill and no stroke All right. now if I have that selected and I clicked in the photograph it's actually going to set whatever I had selected it, it, it set the stroke to that actual hue in there so it lets me actually pull a hue out kinda like in Photoshop All right. so that's some basic considerations when you're dealing with shapes in Adobe InDesign